Hi everyone. Um, not so long ago I put up a post asking you to have a look at a list of symptoms that were related to stress and I asked if you could write a number uh, to indicate how many of those symptoms you experience. Now having a look at those answers, it seems that a lot of people are reporting exceptionally high numbers. I think only two or three um, members had numbers under about six. So this is telling me that there is a lot of stress in this group. Now that's no surprise really, is it? Given that the literature tells us that frontotemporal dementia is one of the most difficult and challenging and stressful chronic illnesses to be a caregiver for. So the problem with stress is that it is a cumulative. And when it builds up and builds up over time, it can create a condition called adrenal fatigue. And this is what I wanted to talk to you about today. So the adrenal glands are two triangular glands that are about the size of your thumb and they sit above our kidneys in the flank area of our bodies and their function is to respond to stress, um, particularly the hormone cortisol which is a stress enzyme in our bodies and they respond to both physical and emotional stress. They don't really discriminate. To the adrenals, stress is stress. Uh, the thing with, we might not like to hear this, but the thing with cortisol is that it can activate uh, fat in the abdominal area. So the body holds fat in a, sort of like a survival mechanism. And when we're under a lot of stress, it reacts cortisol is produced and we accumulate visceral fat, so this really stubborn resistant fat in the belly area. And a sign that you are in adrenal fatigue is when, for no other reason, you're getting that really stubborn belly fat. There are some other symptoms too and they were listed on that particular post, but I'll go through a few with you now. So some of the other symptoms that might suggest you're in adrenal fatigue is sleep onset difficulties. So this is the insomnia where you find it really challenging to get to sleep and you may even wake up in the really early hours of the morning and feel alert or at least unable to go back to sleep, particularly around 3, 4 a.m. Um, in the morning. Other signs of adrenal fatigue is just that feeling of lethargy, just not having energy or motivation to do anything, that general sense of malaise and unwellness, um, a brain fog, feeling like your brain is constantly in a, in a cloud, problems with memory or concentration, attending to information, uh, thyroid problems, absolutely great indicator that you've got fatigue in the adrenal glands low stress tolerance, so where you find yourself overreacting to little stressors in your life. Uh, sinus and breathing uh, symptoms, they're also indicative of adrenal problems. Dizziness when standing, and never feeling rested, so even if you do get a good night's sleep, you still feel tired and worn out through the day. And also just, um, you know, those those typical symptoms related to anxiety, feeling overwhelmed and unable to cope. Uh, so these are all signs of adrenal fatigue. And the adrenals, when stress is accumulating and they never get an opportunity to rest, they get worn out. They just don't respond and produce those anti-stress kind of uh, chemicals and you, you, you're never able to feel rested and peaceful. Uh, now the thing is with with stress, so the cortisol production, it responds to all sorts of stress. Now thoughts alone can be stress can be an stress inducing activity. So thinking negatively, worrying, ruminating, always sort of getting bound up in your head can produce cortisol. So you don't have to be doing anything physically exhausting. Just thinking negatively can induce a stress response. So we need to be able to eliminate stress and we need to be able to give our adrenals a bit of a break. So I'm going to tell you three steps to do this. Now, again, you may not like these steps because sometimes um, some of our coping strategies uh, are enjoyable 
uh, but they're also maladaptive. And one that I'm very guilty of is going to the caffeine, particularly three, four o'clock in the afternoon, I feel like I need my caffeine here. And it does for that moment give me a bit of a burst. But essentially, caffeine is something that will burn out your adrenals rather rapidly. Uh, so if you can reduce your caffeine intake or eliminate it, fabulous. You're going to give your adrenals a little bit of uh, a rest. Also, sugar and the hydrogenated oils, you want to be able to get that out of your diet. You do not need it and essentially you are just making your stress uh, even more severe by, by having these things in your diet. Now, if you're taking them out, there's something you have to replace it with. And again, you may not like this bit of information, but it is going to help you remove some of that chronic stress response, some of those symptoms that I've just gone through with you. You need to get some of the um, complex, the, the high complex vitamin Bs into your diet and magnesium. Coconut oil, fantastic. It has such a great effect on, on your body and it lubricates the brain. It's, um, it's an essential component of a diet. So if you haven't got coconut oil, start adding that. Uh, as to olives or olive oil, uh, vegetables, the leafy greens, so your seaweed. Seaweed also a fabulous source of iodine which your body absolutely needs and often is depleted in. Spinach, kale, all those kind of things. Um, yeah, definitely magnesium supplements. It's like nature's uh, natural sedative in a way. Supplements are really important just with the state of the quality of our soil, the richness of our soil, the depletion of it. Um, we're, we're really lacking in some of these complex vitamins. Definitely the high complex vitamin B. Uh, Ashwagandha, if you don't have that as a supplement or you don't know what it is, go Google it, Ashwagandha. Licorice fruit, um, ginseng, I'm trying to think what else, vitamin, vitamin D and even selenium. Particularly this time of year though, you can also uh, not go wrong with adding some vitamin C and some zinc. To, to your supplements. But start with magnesium and the complex B vitamins. Absolutely uh, necessary for adrenal fatigue. And the third, third thing that um, you need to do is reduce that stress response through the way you think and the things that you do. So as I mentioned, just the negative thoughts will produce uh, cortisol and induce that stress response. And I have done a previous video on this that, um, you know, the, the event itself doesn't have meaning. You give meaning to the event. So this means the way you interpret things in your life can have really adverse consequences or beneficial ones. So your, your body will respond on a chemical level to the way you think. So you need to start thought challenging, start changing the way you interpret events. Uh, to help lower your stress levels. You need to improve your sleep and there's so many reasons why you need to improve sleep that I probably should do a complete video just on sleep itself. But a normal night of sleep should comprise four complete sleep cycles. Each contains about uh, 90 minutes of sleep resulting in uh, REM sleep. Uh, surprisingly, it's actually the deep sleep, so the delta wave sleep, the, the really deep sleep, stage four sleep, where your body is burning fat. It burns more fat, that belly fat, uh, in that cycle of sleep than it does through the day. So if you're getting too much cortisol and you're not getting enough sleep, then you're, you're going to have that really stubborn resistant belly fat. So you need to improve your sleep. And there's some uh, clear things you can to do this. In fact, in my private practice, I spend a whole session, a good hour on sleep uh, hygiene, sleep restriction, and um, just the benefits and, and what happens in that sleep cycle and why it's so important. I will, I'll do a, a separate video on sleep. <clears throat> but if you're not getting a, a good eight hours of sleep, then you're perhaps not getting sufficient sleep. You need to learn how to breathe properly. Now, you know, breathing is something we do without thinking, but perhaps we need to start thinking about it. 
Anxious people tend to breathe quite shallow and rapidly and this does not produce enough oxygen or even stimulation to the vagus nerve, which is a nerve from the base of our brain down into our digestive tract um, and this abdominal area. And when it's stimulated, it produces the anti-stress enzymes for our body. So breathing properly, slowing the breathing down into the diaphragm, long, slow, controlled breaths. Absolutely. Um, an important part of controlling that stress response. So you need that stress inoculation, the ability to not overreact to the smallest thing. And other uh, interventions in psychology are the guided imagery, using your imagination to take you to places where it's soothing and calming. You don't necessarily have to go there um, in person. You can go there in your mind. Um, or go out, take your shoes off and go into nature the electromagnetic fields of the earth, ground yourself, put your feet on the dirt, on the grass, learn to breathe, be mindful in those moments and allow your body an opportunity to recover from the stress response, that chronic stress response. Exercise, 20, 30 minutes a day. This doesn't mean um, vigorous activity. You don't have to run uphill, just a, you know, a, a good walk, getting your heart rate up a little, a paced walk, 20, 30 minutes a day. Um, Taking time out for yourself, you know, getting a massage, being able to enjoy life and find some joy or pleasure in activities. So important and it gives your body an opportunity to recover. Uh, so anyway, I could probably go on and on about ways to self-soothe and um, look after yourself, that self-care. But the three steps to healing the adrenal fatigue is eliminating the, kappa, the caffeine, the sugar, the hydrogenated oils, supplementing your diet, supplements unnecessary. Start with magnesium and high complex vitamin B. Google some of those other um, adaptogens that I mentioned, the adaptogenic herbs such as ashwagandha, licorice root, uh, ginseng and the selenium. Get these into your diet. And again, in winter, add the vitamin C, get some vitamin D naturally or add it to your diet if, if you need it, and the zinc. Lower your stress level through some functional care, pleasure-inducing activities, challenging the way you think about events, and start giving your adrenal glands an opportunity to rest. Um, I think I talk way too fast. If I've talked too, too fast through this, then um, maybe I need to come back and do a, a shorter video. But it's really important if you've got high numbers on that post that you consider those three things that I've mentioned here. And if you do, if um, you, you do give any of these a go and you get some positive benefits, and please share in the group because I want people to share their experiences and, and start sharing some of these keys to success because caring for our loved ones with frontotemporal dementia has a real um, stressful impact on us and we have to take, uh, take conscientious effort in looking after ourselves because if we're not looking after ourselves, you know, we're really not in a position to be looking after anyone else. Anyway, that's it for now. I wish you all a very happy peaceful weekend and um, I'll be back again with another video soon. Until then, take care, look after each other. Bye-bye.